Good morning, friends. It is uh, Thursday, August 12. Hope uh, you're doing well today. Uh, we have a beautiful psalm, Psalm 42, uh, to consider uh, this morning. This is a somewhat well-known one uh, in sort of the more common translations. It begins with, as the deer longs for the water, so my soul longs after you. It'll sound a little different uh, because of our reading from the message contemporary translation but um this is this is a beautiful psalm and uh, uh eugene peterson who is the uh, translator of the message has uh has a reflection on it so i'm going to invite you to enter into a moment of quiet and stillness i'll read the psalm and then i'll put uh, peterson's um, commentary before us for our consideration so let's take a moment to still ourselves Psalm 42, a white-tailed deer drinks from the creek. I want to drink God, deep droughts of God. I'm thirsty for God alive. I wonder, will I ever make it, arrive and drink in God's presence? I'm on a diet of tears, tears for breakfast, tears for supper, all day long. People knock at my door, pestering, where is this God of yours? These are the things I go over and over, emptying out the pockets of my life. I was always at the head of the worshiping crowd, right out in front, leading them all, eager to arrive and worship, shouting praises, singing thanksgiving, celebrating all of us God's feast. Why are you down in the dumps, dear soul? Why are you crying the blues? Fix my eyes on God. Soon I'll be praising again. He puts a smile on my face. He's my God. When my soul is in the dumps, I rehearse everything I know of you, from Jordan depths to Herman Heights, including Mount Mizar. Chaos calls to chaos, to the tune of whitewater rapids. Your breaking surf, your thundering breakers crash and crush me. Then God promises to love me all day, sing songs all through the night. My life is God's prayer. Sometimes I ask God, my rock-solid God, why do you let me down? Why am I walking around in tears, harassed by enemies? They're out to, to kill these tormentors with their obscenities, taunting day after day. Where is this God of yours? Why are you down in the dumps, dear soul? Why are you crying the blues? Fix my eyes on God, and soon I'll be praising again. He puts a smile on my face, for he is my God. So here's Peterson's comments for us. He says, Psalm 42 takes some common experiences that we all have of disappointment with God and others. It builds on the basic revelation that we are created for a relationship with God and with other people. The psalmist uses three metaphors to shed light on those relationships. A thirsty deer is the first metaphor. What water is to the deer, God is to you and me. We simply must have God, and it must be the living God, nothing stale or stagnant. The deer runs past all the mud puddles and swamps and marshes to clear flowing streams. I don't want what is left over from God after last week's thunder shower. I want him fresh, flowing, and living. What I learned in Sunday school in the third grade won't satisfy me. What I read in the Bible last week won't satisfy me. What someone told me This morning on television or the radio won't quench my heart. I want to get the thirst, I want to get the water myself. I need to have God. Every thirst, every hunger, every longing for satisfaction is a metaphor for the fundamental longing in our lives of God. A violent storm is the second metaphor in the psalm. When life is more than we can handle, we cry out for help. But that very experience implies that life can be handled. The experience of inadequacy implies the possibility of adequacy. What we call trouble, living through circumstances that are beyond our strength or abilities, leads people of faith to discover God's faith. That's what the psalmist did. Overwhelmed by the white-capped swells of life, he climbed into the lifeboat that was God. And there, 
in the storm, he waited, he trusted, he believed. There, with the wind howling all around him, he learned to sing. A lawless society is the third metaphor. Society is filled with deceptive people who are out to get us. We know that there is a cure for injustice, a solution to impression, and an answer to unfairness. Malice, wickedness, and crime are symptoms for which God has always given, has already given a diagnosis. Just as every experience of need opens us up to receive his help, so every act of injustice creates an opportunity for us to share God's deliverance. Some pretty deep thoughts there from Peterson as we consider uh, the life of faith and the opportunity of God to be um, adequate and powerful, more powerful than our circumstances, and the things that uh, cause us to fear and tremble in our lives. Let's, uh, let's go to God in prayer. Please join me. Lord, we, we thank you that you are adequate, that you are big enough, that you are strong enough, that you are our deliverer, that we can put our hope in you and trust in you, that we can rest our lives in the promise of your care. Lord, today, as we go into our lives, we pray for your guidance, pray for your leading. We thank you that you have been with us, that you have provided, and that you promise to care for us and lead us. And so, Lord, let us know that today. Lord, each of us has, has concerns, prayers, thoughts on our minds, in our hearts. We want to lift those up to you. So, friends, I invite you to lift up the prayer of your heart this morning. Lord, hear our prayers. So, Lord, Lord, we lift these prayers up to you, giving you thanks that you hear them and that we can trust them. Lead us this day, Lord. Let us this day be people who, who love and serve the Lord Jesus Christ with all that we are. May we be people who love the people you place in our lives. For this we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good to be with you, friends. Uh, God bless you today. Uh, thank you for, for being a part of these devotions. Uh, take care, and we'll see you again tomorrow.